Hey friends, this is Caitlin from CaitlinMargaret.com and today I wanted to talk to you about a really powerful practice for activating self-compassion. So tell me if this sounds familiar. You have a new habit, so maybe that's a physical habit like going to the gym or eating right, or maybe it's a more rel relational habit, for example, trying to be kind to someone who really triggers you, or trying to be more honest about your needs and your feelings, whatever it is. And then one day, somehow, you wake up and you see that you've totally fallen off the track of this new practice, right? Haven't been to the gym for four days, or you, you know, ate an entire pizza, or you lost your shit on another human being, or uh, so in some way you fell off the path of your personal goals in that moment of who you really want to be right and so what happens is you automatically enter into this place of shame and regret and doubt and guilt and all of these other kind of ugly emotions right it's supernatural but here's the difference between people who are able to move forward and people who stop the people who stop decide that they this is just a part of who they are right if they keep falling off the wagon it must mean that they're not meant to be on the wagon at all they give up on themselves and they develop a defeatist narrative around this is just who i am i'm not going to be good at this i'm not going to be able to do this right it's just not something i can do now that happens for a lot of people but the other way to go is no matter how many times you fall off the wagon you stop you practice self-compassion you practice self-forgiveness, and then you say, you know what, I'm getting back on this wagon. I'm going to realign with my purpose. I'm going to get back in touch with my heart's values and get up once again. That's where I will be evaluated. That's what I will be measured upon is how many times I continue to get up and try again and realign rather than how perfect I actually was at pursuing whatever individual goal it was, right? Now, how do you actually get to yourself, get yourself to a place where you can move from being so self-critical that you're stuck to being able to say, hey, you know what, I can forgive myself and I'm going to get back on this horse, right? Well, as I've talked about in so many of my other posts and blogs, self-compassion is the foundational practice to start moving you in that direction. And today I really wanted to talk to you about one specific way of practicing self-compassion that is not often talked about, right? And that's about self-touch. And so a lot of times when we think about self-compassion and a lot of what I've written, it's about talking to yourself in the way you would to a child or a best friend with, with love and understanding and willingness to forgive, right? And having those messages, those verbal messages, and that can be really powerful. But for some people, even getting to that feels so fake in a moment when we've turned on ourselves and we're mad at ourselves that it's easier to start with gesture. So if you think about when you're when you were a little kid and you wanted you know to be comforted what did you crave from mommy or from grandma or whoever right you craved a hug you craved them holding you and just reminding you that things would be okay right and it was that gesture that was so powerful more than any words that they ever probably said right and so the same thing is true for us when we give ourselves gestures of love like warm hugs or like just rubbing your arm or putting your hands on your heart and closing your eyes and feeling the warmth, right? Or maybe for me, I really enjoy scratching my scalp in this loving way all the way down on my shoulders and arms, right? Whatever your practice is, is fine. But all of these gestures physically really communicate love and understanding. And on a kind of biochemical level, what they do is they release oxytocin, which is a calming chemical that helps you move into your more rational brain. And they help to lower cortisol, which is the stress hormone, which is what's part of producing all that negativity, right? So imagine if you could just stop whatever you are doing, that cycle of self-criticism for one minute, and just really practice a loving gesture. Do it right now with me. Figure out one loving gesture and go ahead and embrace it. 
Breathe into it, smile into it, feel it in your heart, feel it in your bones. I'm telling you, just that is enough for you to pause and get out of that self-defeating victim narr narrative and back into, hey, it's time for me to practice compassion and realign with what's important. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Have a great week and I'll see you on the blog next week.